Yeah, I flew all the way down from Seattle to give a talk on conversational chatbots using uh, React Native. Uh, I'm Karthik Venkatesh, I'm the CTO of Trinomi. Uh, I'm, of course, from Seattle, and I come here monthly to be with my team um, at Trinomi. <laughs> you can follow me on Keybase at Amas Karthik. And today we're gonna be talking about React Native apps and building a conversational UI using AWS Lex. Let me briefly go over React Native. Actually, before we start, as who all have used React Native or used React Native day to day? All right, cool, cool. Uh, in my opinion, it's an excellent platform for building native applications using JavaScript and React, right? It, it, you get all the tooling, you get the familiar data, uh, familiar developer experience as you build out these native apps, right? So then you can uh, really take all your React skills and apply them and build really, build truly native apps uh, and not just HTML5 web apps, et cetera, right? React Native ships with a powerful component library that pretty much gives you 80% of what you need uh, unless you really need to go deep into, uh, let's say, uh, getting a nice sound recorder, or going low level into the actual uh, um, OS and platform component level aspects to get the power of it, right? Or if you want to do multi-threading and different aspects, then you can choose to go and build your own React component, uh, native components and bridge them over to React or actually just utilize libraries out there. And React Native comes with a maturing but good tool chain, right? Uh, I, for example, today I probably spent two hours trying to fix my simulator and React Native uh, integration because it just kind of forked when I tried to test three apps at once. It just kind of like just screwed me over for almost a couple hours as I tried to fix it. But it's all in all a very good uh, framework, platform, and great support with, from Facebook and the rest of the community out there. Best of all, uh, like I just said, you can harness the power of the platform when you need to. Uh, and then you know you you have access to and you can build components in Objective C, Swift, Kotlin, Java, whatever you want, right? It supports Redux, Mobex, Relay, and others, and it ships out of box with Babel, Jest, and Flow. In fact, with the tool chain, you can initialize your project. It bootstraps it. It's pretty opinionated about what uh, comes with it, and you can get going. I can't take credit for this architecture diagram. Um, but it, it, I, I, it's a great article. I've posted it there and I'll post it on the uh, uh, Twitter page that goes into the depth of React Native architecture and actually how the runtime architecture works. But just as a brief overview, uh, you essentially get a native application that hosts a JavaScript runtime and a bridge layer that allows bi-directional communication between your native components and the JavaScript layer. So then you can, uh, in fact, a lot of the out-of-box components and a lot of the well-known libraries, most of their code is, most of their work is in the uh, native layer, and then they do a lot of uh, platform level switching and things, and you get a pretty seamless experience across the board. In summary, I love React Native. Um, I'm probably biased, right, just like I, <laughs> but uh, you can really build good cross-platform native apps um, with our most beloved JavaScript, right? Good. All right, let's dive in. Uh, we'll look at AWS Lex, and then we'll, I'll show you demo, and then I'll go through a walkthrough of the code and how everything is structured. Essentially, the main concepts is you're trying to guess or you're trying to uh, really figure out the user's intent, whether they want to actually book a trip, order flowers, you know, whatever you want actually from an um, intent perspective. Then it, it pretty much maps intents to utterances, and again, with any apps that are really built uh, with AI and machine learning, you really need good feedback loops from data, right? If you don't have good feedback loops from data, you're not really doing it for uh, service and you might miss a lot of uh, actual users who want to get something out of it, but you might, you might be missing their intent. And I can't serve that purpose in 20 minutes, but in a real world situation, you would want to actually get good feedback loops and AWS and other services in, uh, like IBM Watson and stuff have those feedback loop options built in. The good thing is also um, it allows you to hook into Lambda so you can actually trigger Lambda calls at that point and actually build out a serverless application that then fulfills your requests, et cetera, uh, through it. So I've already created a, 
um, Lexbot and let's go and look at it. I'm just using their example. What we're gonna say is we're gonna be listening to book a car, reserve a car, make a car reservation to map to the book car intent, or we're gonna look at the book a hotel. These, uh, you know, just when you wanna actually book a hotel to the book hotel intent. And then once the intent's mapped, what happens is it walks you, you know, then you have to engage with your user to get the appropriate um, data elements back to be able to fulfill the request, right? So then you're gonna prompt the user and then ask the user's prompt, you get, the feed, you get the particular data elements and do it. Now, Amazon has a good number of uh, pre-built um, types, which already have gone through their machine learning and AI aspects and uh, gotten pretty good uh, recognition. Uh, but then if you b make your own slot types, again, you gotta feed back into it and make it better over time. All right, let's actually demo it. This, the simulator has been sitting here for a while, so let's just refresh. All right, so uh, I just created a simple chat box. Let's do it with a text chat and an audio chat. Let's do the te text chat first, and then we'll go into the audio chat, and then I'll go into the code aspects to see the differences between the two. You prompt the user, and then of course the user is like, all right, I wanna book a hotel. Then, you know, what city are, and I'm actually connected to the AWS uh, US East instance right now. AWS Lex is only available in Ireland and US East. Ah, my scroll's broken. course and then all right and then of course I just put a end thank you but then at that point you have an option to either trigger an AWS Lambda function or uh, you get all the data back and then you can act on that let me go back here and start an audio chat next let's see if it actually recognizes me I gotta book the hotel room, I'll book the car. Reserve a car. Sorry, what can I help you with? <laughs> <laughs> All right, book a car. In what city do you need to rent a car? San Francisco. What day do you want to start your rental? Next Friday. What day do you want to return the car? Let's try this one. Two weeks from now. How old is the driver for this rental? 36. How old is the driver for this rental? 36. Sorry, I am not able to assist at this time. I love it. Uh, see, potential of this technology. That's fine. All right, it's ended. I, I got to refresh the se session. And my uh, error handling is probably not great. Anyway, you can see that it's pretty raw, but if you feed enough loopbacks into it, utterances, and uh, even year, it can, uh, you can talk about the different types of uh, sentences that you hear back. So in a real world example, any misses, you would, you would grab that sentence, feed that back as an acceptance, and then you, would, you could get that automatic loop back in there. Um, caching usually by default is 15 minutes. So let's say you change the voice, uh, you, it'll probably take about 15 to 20 minutes to get that propagation out to your active session, at least. So at this point, let's actually look at the code. Um, I'll also talk, uh, go through the React aspects of it, uh, React Native aspects of it, and then go from there. All right. React Native is a lot like uh, React. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it'll be very familiar to any React dev. Uh, we're using React Native, and I'm using React Native app navigation uh, to do a, st I'm pretty much starting a single screen app. Uh, I have my Redux store and then I'm essentially passing the store and provider into the root components. Um, and then from there, essentially booting up the app and going, going on. So actually, let me actually start with the uh, 
Lex API, and then go on from there. So in the services, essentially AWS as a JavaScript SDK, and within the JavaScript SDK, it has a React Native SDK, and I, I, you should probably never store your secrets the way I'm doing it, but that's all right for the demo. Uh, you have your AWS configuration, you set up your credentials, you set up a region, and then you start the Lex runtime. And then you pretty much, so Lex allows you to publish different versions of your bots uh, with different voices, with different settings, et cetera. And then you can pretty much choose which, uh, you know, bot and publish bot to connect to. Here, this is the actual, I'm passing text. So what I'm doing is um, React Native doesn't have any built-in way to um, pass the audio in the accepted formats currently. Um, so either I build a native application or I use uh, React Native voice and I'm able to uh, do speech to text. And then I take that text and pass it on to AWS. Um, and then I accept the response in audio MPEG. And then you, know, you can pass in session attributes, other things, which then your Lambda functions can actually hook onto and then go on to the next part, right? Pretty much doing Lex runtime post content. I, I'll always use the promise API and then I return the audio stream. Now, you'll see in here that I'm actually gonna base in 64 encode the audio stream and then decode it because of some limitations. Again, uh, with the out of box libraries that React Native have, um, if, if I wanted to spend time, I could build my own React Native component and then uh, to allow it to play back better. And then I have another function, which I probably didn't need to you know, split it out. It's essentially the same. The text API is essentially the same, except for the fact that you're posting text instead of posting content. That's literally the same thing. You'd probably, I'd probably have the same function do both things, but. Then of course I have my oh, actions. And what I'm doing right here, I'm getting the audio stream back from Lex, and then I'm base64 encoding it. I'm pushing it out to my state. And then in my chat component, I actually love the uh, decorator uh, syntax. I hope they finally accept that in and goes past stage two. Anyway, um, here what I'm gonna do is actually to get any error I'm gonna put in the console warn and then essentially get the base64 audio. And once I have the base64 audio, um, most of the React Native sound playback or audio playback um, components have a hard time. You have to pretty much hack it to get to play audio streams that you have in memory. Like if you have a buffer of an audio stream and playing that back. It does really good if you have a service uh, or URL that you link it to or you bundle a audio file with it. Um, you can hack around that, maybe save it into a temporary cache location and stuff like that. But actually, web views for this way work much more efficient. Uh, or you just build a um, actual wrap uh, iOS and Android's audio SDKs and you can build your own component at that point. So I, I'm using uh, the HTML audio, HTML5 audio player. And essentially what it allows me to do is I create a simple HTML page which I embed into a web view and here I, using the post message, I send the base64 buffer, I decode it, and essentially create an object URL which you can do, and then you can just essentially convert it to a blob, create an object URL of that blob, and then audio.play. And that's how I actually implemented the audio playback there. Again, if you, you know, and this is actually why I love React Native is, and React in general, is that it allows you to iteratively build product and push it out and then if you then in the next stages kind of build the deeper parts of it. Thank you guys. <laughs>